guys, we are going to talk about conscious creativity. So what is conscious creativity? It's creativity that is non-accidental. And before I'm going to tell you how to be creative, how to influence your own creativity, how to influence other people with your own creativity, I'm gonna ask you who consider themselves creative. Wow, great. This is awesome. So we are going to warm up with a very simple exercise that is going to stimulate your brain a little bit. So you're going to introduce yourself to someone you don't know with your name and then three words that each start with the same letter of your name, right? So for example, my name is Dorota. I'm daring. Well, I wrote determinated and then my friend made me realize that word actually didn't exist. So feel free to invent your own words, especially if you are not native speaker. So determine and delicious, right? Why not? So turn to the person you don't know and please introduce yourself with three words and your name. Come on. <laughs> Be creative. You can invent your own words. All right. All right, we are going to continue slowly. Right, how was that? Pretty fun, right? So creativity work in a very simple way, like anything else. To train creativity, you, do, you actually don't train creativity, like you don't train happiness. If you want to access happiness, you will train your gratitude, you will train compassion. You will put it into different sections, right? So creativity, intellectual operations that involve in creative thinking belong to six, actually, groups. And that's abstract, ab abstraction operation, association, deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, metaphorical thinking, and transformation. And so what we did today, it was trying to find association and analogy that not only actually create new pathways in your brain, but also help you to remember the other person's name. And I'm not going to go deeper, but if you would like to read more about heuristic technique and how, how you can actually train your creativity, these authors, all of them, are, wrote amazing books about this, so I highly recommend it to you. So creative people show tendency of thought and action that in most people are segregated. They, con then they contain contradictory extremes. Instead of being an individual, each of them is a multitude. What that means? In the society, we very often think we need to know that one thing, that we will become absolutely the best at. And that's absolutely wrong, because that limits us. We keep then, and we block ourselves in finding over and over that one thing, but you can't possibly find that one thing unless you try everything. 
Picasso, in one of the interviews, he was asked, are you a photographer? Yes, I am. Are you a writer? Yes, I am. Are you a sculptor? Yes, I am. Are you a filmmaker? Yes. He was doing everything, and thanks to that, his imagination was so big. So never limit yourself with, you know, I need to have that one thing that, I will, that will represent me and who I am. If I didn't try every possible thing in my life in art, I could not possibly be able to even hold position of creative director. So what influenced your creativity? Creativity is influenced by three, three things. First thing is your environment. There was a very interesting study made out of 1,200 people who are experiencing non-symbolic consciousness. And they talked to those people and did qualitative and quantitative assessment in the basket of cognition, emotion, perception, and sense of self. And what they discovered is that people from the same tradition in different location have less in common than people from different tradition in the same location. So whoever you surround yourself with and all your entire environment influence every single day your creativity. Some people say you are a multitude of five best friends you know, right? It kind of works like this. So if you want to stimulate your creativity, start with stimulating your environment. Go to art galleries, spend time with creative people. It's gonna influence how you think, how you per perceive words, how you express yourself. So the second would be your perception. We can control our lives by controlling our perception. And the last one, your curiosity. When someone emphasizes the technique over concept, they ask how. People with a curiosity, they keep asking why. How to be creative? It's not actually that difficult. First of all, remain curious. Every one of you, when you were little, you were crazy creative. You had your imaginary friends, you were building castles out of sand, and you have doll houses and so on. All was happening in our mind. And then what happened, the society actually learned us to live either in the past or in the future, right? How many of you were asked when you were a child, who, who would you like to be when you grew up? All of us. How you can possibly know what you are going to do when you grow up in 20 years? It's impossible. So, by all the time learning to and be programmed to live in the future, you actually unlearn to live in the present moment. And that is what limits completely our creativity, because creativity can only live in the present moment, right? So, all this society, school, parents, when they all the time ask you all this question about the future, they actually stress you, they put a fear in your mind, and that fear limits your creativity. So remain curious, remind yourself how it is to be a child, have this childish brain, and start to be curious about everything that is around you. Don't put things in the baskets, don't think automatically, and that will help you to be curious. Then many ideas are always better than one idea. When we start to be um, creative, we often find this one idea and we be become obsessed by this. And then what happens is that we switch from our right brain that is creative to our left side brain that is analytical. And we start to conceptualize this idea, we start to perfectionize this idea and become so obsessed that we can't even more be objective about, about this idea. And when you do that, you are actually not training your brain to be creative. You train your brain to be analytical. So in order to become more creative, you, need to, don't be, you can't be afraid to have as much idea as possible. And pretty much, you should never be attached to them. So I guarantee you, if you have 50 ideas, you are more, li more likely to have a one good idea in all of this number of 50 than if you have one, right? Does it make sense? So don't be afraid to be imperfect. Now, imperfection leads to somewhere unexpected. It's a free from mistakes, free from faults, and it's simply more interesting. Great examples is Kintsugi art. Something broken that was united together with gold created an effect that is so much more powerful and so much more beautiful. So don't be afraid to be perfect, to be unperfect and try different things, try to, try to break, try to destroy, 
try to de decompose things, and you might be surprised by the result that can actually bring you. Embrace impermanence. The only way to make sense out of change is to plug into it, move with it, with it and join the dance. It all goes away, eventually everything goes away. I, become, I became um, really fascinated with something that is called ephemeral design. Ephemeral design is a design that is created just for a short moment, and then it's gone. Because that would not only train me in not becoming obsessed with everything that I have ever created, but I wouldn't be also afraid of making mistakes if that happened. What I found is that actually the result was much more perfect than I would actually expect it. This is one of my art I did for one of the music videos, a design that was created just for a moment, just for an instance. It looked like something that probably you could say I work on it for, for days and conceptualize it. Not at all. It was created in 10 minutes. And it looks so beautiful. Another one, this is a dress made out of toilet paper that I did, that I created in 15 minutes. It looks pretty damn perfect, right? Because there was not, no fear behind it to destroy something, to make something that will not look good, because it won't, it won't exist anyway. It's a beautiful training to your mind to create things and actually destroy them afterwards. Another one, it's a dress made out of paper. Again, it was destroyed with the pain after five minutes. And, and, and I find such a powerful expression in something that actually is part of a process of disappearance. And Picasso said, you have to know where to finish. I think in art, we always have that problem. We don't know when to finish, when the art becomes you know, this piece we want to keep forever. Enjoy the process more than the final result. Do usual things in a usual way. So, when you think about this, and we talked about this automatic reaction to everything, we have been programmed since childhood to have this automatic reaction to everything. One time, they actually test um, in the office environment, they changed the placement of the printer, and they test with the camera how many times people would make a mistake to go to the old place before the, their mind would actually learn to go to the new location. Eighteen. Eighteen, guys. So what does it mean that we, most of the things we are doing, we are doing them automatically? And we don't even think about this. We have a certain reaction and we don't even question why we react in a certain way. We don't question that maybe one time in the childhood we have been programmed to react in a certain way and it was so much coded in our mind and that we just do it without questioning it. And so if you don't question how you do things, you are never going to be creative. So try to, try to every day do something differently. Choose different way when you go to work. Brush your teeth with left hand, left hand. eat different food, try different clothes, try to react in a different way, try to contradict yourself. If you, if you are terrified of speaking on stage, well, how would you know that you are actually terrified before trying? And in the first, um, in the even more important question, where that fear, fears come from? What kind of belief created that fear that you are afraid of speaking on stage? And then you believed in that thing. You cultivated it over years and it became your personality. Personality is just combination of whatever you think about yourself. Nothing more. So, do usual things in a usual way. Be stubborn about compromise, plan to have more accidents, be mature enough to be childish, and contradict yourself more often. I absolutely love this quote. I think it describes perfectly what I wish everybody here should do. Challenge everything. There is no right or wrong way to do things, no rules. Attitude is so much more important than capability. When you think about this, if Einstein didn't actually question Newton, we wouldn't have a theory of re relativity. If Beethoven believed that Mozart's way of playing was right, he wouldn't have composed nine symphonies. If, for example, um, let's say, Vishen Lakhiani believed education was right, we wouldn't have been sitting here, right? Try to question everything. And even if you agree with something, still question it. Still, still ask, if, is it right for me? 
let go of the result. The higher purpose is to have no purpose at all. Don't identify a goal, but rather the area of focus. Goals identified in outcome, area of focus identifies how do you spend your time. Goal is a result, area of focus is a gateway. You are lost the instant you know what the result will be. So, if you don't know when you are go where, where you are actually going, the journey becomes much more surprising. You might learn so much more about yourself, and the process of art, the process of creation is actually so much more powerful and so much more important than the final result. It's like meditation, it's like expressing yourself. Art has become the most undefined, unlimited, uh, unframed language in our society that is actually accepted by, by the society. So use that. Use it as a tool to actually heal and express yourself. The people, why people love traveling so much? Because of the novelty, because they go to the place and they, they are actually, they don't know where they are going. You end up in this new place, Tallinn, you walk on the streets and suddenly you see everything that is around you. We don't do that anymore in the places we live in. We have this direction where we go to, this goal, I'm going to my work, I'm going to the coffee place, we shut down in our mind, we don't see anything that is around us. Wake up, when you walk on the streets, start to experience this place like you are seeing this place in the very, very first time. And you have no idea when that, that place might actually take you. So stay open to these surprises. Reimagine and recreate. Art is not about reproducing an idea, but recreating it, creating a new vision of the same reality. In the world of art, people are very often afraid of copying the other people, right? But we also believe that everything has been done already. Art and everything you are actually doing is a combination of everything you have, you have already experienced, everything that you have already seen, people you have loved, all the books you have read, and all the places you have seen. You don't even sometimes know when you come out with the idea, if it's your own idea, or if you maybe read it somewhere one long time ago and you don't remember it. That it becomes this mix, and that's fine. But rather than trying to reproduce those ideas, try to see them differently. Try to look at the same thing in a different way. That is almost more powerful or as powerful as creating idea from scratch. For example, Marcel Duchamp, one of the greatest artists from 20th century, reproduced, make a parody of Mona Lisa at the moustache and called her, which phonetically in English sounds something like Ella Chodoku, which, mean, which means she has a hot ass. So he changed just by a title, actually, a perception of a very serious art created um, way before him. And so, sometimes by just giving a title to something, you change a perception of how people see that same thing, right? Another great example is um, Liechtenstein reproducing Van Gogh's bedroom in Aals. Um, it's the same piece of art, represents the same thing, although it's so different, right? It's a pop art, it, and Liechtenstein was the very father of pop art. He wasn't afraid of reproducing. He, was, he wasn't afraid of recreating, because he knew that his vision of the same thing was completely different. Great example is David LaChapelle, Last Supper. Right? Great representation. <laughs> when LaChapelle was actually 17 years old, he started to work with Andy Warhol, and Andy um, hired him for one of, of his interviews as a photographer, and, and he, said, he just said to him, well, I don't care what you do, just make everybody look good. And he's one of the most successful uh, photographer, fine art photographer of the century. So don't worry what other people might think. Be who you are and say what you feel, because those who mind don't matter, and those who matter don't mind. So be authentic, try to really be undefined and express yourself fully. I can guarantee you one thing, if you are excited about something, opinion of other people won't matter to you, because you will share your own excitement. 
if you share an idea that you are not excited about, this is where the problem might begin. Because then you will be frustrated, well, people didn't like my idea. Were you liking your idea in the first place? If you will always commit into sharing just what you really love and are passionate about, you won't be afraid of people's rejection. When Liechtenstein, which I just showed you before, uh, created pop art, people hated it, hated it. Everybody was judging it and saying how ugly it was. And then he knew he was into something. <laughs> so never limit yourself. And that means never limit yourself in the way you would try to express yourself, but also never limit yourself with what is actually possible. I'm going to tell you a story. This is a drawing I created to kind of put it into your head, how you can use framing into unframing yourself. So I had this dream when I was little. I wanted to become an artist, right? I was Polish. Um, my grandparents, when I was, uh, were taken during the war to Siberia, most, most of the family died. We were very poor when I was growing up. So when I said to my parents when I was little, I want to become an artist, everybody would laugh, as you can imagine. But I cultivated this dream. And when I turned 18, I told my parents, I'm going to move to Paris, I'm going to learn French, and, and I'm going to study art, you know? <laughs> Simple. <laughs> my parents didn't allow me to go, so I went anyway, and then I was too proud to actually ask them for any help, so I would hire myself in an English-speaking bar, and I would start study French for five hours per day, and then after one year, I would complete uh, my international exam from French, so I could finally be able to apply to French university. So I prepared everything, the day came, and I was so excited going to this art school, and I go for this exam, and the people are saying, well, you can't really apply, you are one year too, young, too, too old. I'm like, what? And in France, because it's a public university and everybody applies from all over the country, that they make something like limit age, age limit, right? So you can only apply one year after a high school. But Polish high school finished one year later than French high school, so I actually was unable to apply. So imagine me, I just spent like working in the bar, learning French for one year, working super hard, preparing my portfolio, and I could not even apply? What did I do? I was like, no, I don't believe it. There must be a way. So I would go to the same school every single week for another months and months, and I would try to convince them, like, you know, I'm Polish, maybe you can make some exception, international student. And after months, they said, you know what? All right, I'm really tired of seeing you here. <laughs> I'm going to organize an interview, but I can't promise anything. And because it's not official, you're going to have your interview in the coffee place next to the school. I'm like, that's all I want, that's it. So they organized me this interview, and I'm going there being convinced there will be maybe one teacher, that's it. I arrived, and there was like 10 teachers, 10 main teachers. I was speechless. My hands were shaking, I couldn't talk. I put my huge portfolio on this small, tiny coffee table, and they're just like, silence, and just stood. I thought I would die. And after 10 minutes, they said, all right, you can start in September, but you have one year to prove yourself. Because I would have subjects like chemistry, physics, technology of fabrics, tissue, and so on, and I, they, didn't have any guarantee I would actually manage to do that in French. After four years, I finished university as a fourth in the history international student. And my collection was chosen one of the three best collections of the school and it would represent the school for another year. And then I was asked to be in the jury of that school. So when you feel something is right for you, trust that feeling. If you wake up every morning and you feel you should be a writer, that means you should be a writer. If you wake up every morning you feel you should be a musician, you should be a musician. But you don't know, you can't choose when and how things will happen. So you just need to stand, stay open and trust that gut feeling that you have that something is right for you. So, talking about that, let the idea come to you. 
Now we live in the noisiest area ever. There never was a time when we needed silence and quiet and calm more. But we worship speed for its own sake and sheer sound for, it, for its own sake and power for its own sake. We have been taught that to absorb information. Since school, everybody puts everything in us. Nobody teaches us to take things out, right? And the idea, the truth is the best idea, don't come from process of rational thinking, that come from the enlightenment of the intuition, like Einstein said. So meditation, walking, finding a quiet time to actually let the idea come out from you, it's the best way to be creative. Why you are not creative? Because you don't give yourself space to be creative. How many of you sit at least 10 minutes during the day still? Wow, I'm so impressed, that's amazing. But most of the people, you are, like this is pretty conscious crowd, most of people run every single day and just focus on their task and focus on whatever they want to do, et cetera, et cetera. And they don't create the space into idea come actually to you. And so I invite you all, if you don't do it, the best way to bring the idea out is wake up in the morning and stay, lie in bed for another 15 minutes with doing nothing. You don't even have to meditate, don't do visualization, this is thinking. Just stay still. If you have a problem, ask a question and then do nothing. Put yourself white paper in front of you and just sit there. This is the best practice to actually design, come out with the idea. Create a space for it, for your mind to actually create something, right? Lucid dreaming is a great way that you can practice as well. Um, and how you practice lucid dreaming is by not opening your eyes in the morning. So the moment you open your eyes, you actually lose 90% of the information that came to you from your unconscious mind in the middle of the night. By waking up, keeping your eyes closed, I can guarantee you that you will most likely very quickly learn how to remember most of your dreams. And as you know, Einstein, most of his idea actually came to him in his dream. So this is very good practice that you can also try. Experiment with a variety of expression. And what that means is, notice like when we listen to the music, some of you guys pay attention to the lyrics and another people will pay attention to actual music, right? We have these different senses that we read this reality with. And we also have a different senses we express our, ourselves with. So different idea represented with different medium will have a different impact. The same idea represented by photography, by movie, by writing, by graphic design will have a completely different effect on you. So first of all, when you create something, you need to think about the right medium that you want to translate your, your message to. But also, what is even more important is you should learn what is that you, what is your actually biggest expression? What senses you want to use the most when you express your piece of art or your, your, your creative project and so on? And that doesn't necessarily mean that painting has to be created only visually. Painting can be created by touch, right? Painting can be created with all these different, uh, different forms. And also, it doesn't mean that art actually has to be created only with your right side of brain, creative one. No, it can be very analytical and it can be absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna prove it to you. So this is a um, piece of art that was perfectly intuitive, emotional, sensual, sensual. There was no idea behind it. It was purely created with the right side of the brain. And then this project it's a project that I have created that explores identity, equality, and integration with people from around the world that is supposed to unite people. And actually, the place is printed onto a T-shirt with the GPS coordinates. So every single pe person who has that T-shirt can co go to the place, photograph themselves, and make a part of the world. So sewn into the world, south, east, west, north, pretty much brings the message we are all one. This project, only for developing concept, 
it took a year. And I guarantee you, it wasn't creative. It was mathematics, how to make it happen, how to make that happen. So even if you think you are not, like you are purely, you have purely mathematical brain, it's still gonna work. For example, how amazing art, three-dimensional room, painted in the way when it becomes two-dimensional square. That's purely mathematical based, art based on measurements and so on, and though it's so strong and powerful. Another great example is Buckminster Fuller, one of the greatest architects in the world. When he was a little, he, well, all his life he had a bad vision, but um, when he was a little, he really couldn't see much and there was no really glasses yet and, and so on. And one time, the teacher at school asked all the kids to create buildings. And because he couldn't really see, it didn't make sense for him to create a square. He wanted to, to create something more exciting. So, he created a triangle just because touch-wise it was more interesting. Didn't stop him that he couldn't really see? No, that became his strength. The fact that he couldn't actually see and he would design architecture through his touch became his biggest strength. So I invite you to really get to know it, like your, all your senses and what is your strength and how, what kind of art you can actually create out of it. So Think with your feelings and think with your senses. Now, the most important, you don't need a skill or talent. This is really fundamental. Maybe you need a skill or talent 100 years ago. Now, in nowadays society, it is all about an idea. It is idea that counts. It's, art is not logical, it's not practical anymore. It doesn't make sense very often. You walk into art gallery and you see like black box in the middle of the room and you're like, what is it? And if the actually artist is able to explain why this black box is there, it becomes an art, right? It's all about the concept. So for example, chair you can't sit on, right? To hold your clothes, but change your perception of the chair. Do you need a talent to create that? No, not really. Another great photography by Lucien Bart, who put represent well-known items on objects in a very unusual way, almost shocking, almost provocative. Great, um, great artist Sebastian Erazuric, who also used that technique of, of combining different shocking, provocative, um, representing object in a very provocative way. To so it gives you different completely different vision of the same thing, and it actually have a very strong message behind that. Architecture, design inside out. All the pipes, plumbing, escalator, lifts, cables, are all outside. Does it make sense? It doesn't. But it's one of the, west, of the, one of the most well-known buildings in, uh, in the art. It's the Centre Pompidou in Paris. Or this one, Philip Stark. It's basically lemon squeezing that doesn't work. And what made him famous is that it doesn't work. Because he combined in here his absolute obsession for science fiction, for the shapes of animals, and for the shapes of plants. It represented him, and now it's in Museum of Modern Arts, precisely because it doesn't work. Two, um, Runways, the most famous in the history of art. First, Alexander McQueen, representing a dress painted during the runway that is not practical, it's not even beautiful, but the idea itself to do it, something like this, such a performance, create, made out of him a true, real artist. Right? The other very famous runway in the history of fashion is Victor and Rolf, Fall 2002. And these are clothes. Mm -hmm. These are clothes that are um, made out of blue screen, and in them you have a projection of the landscape. Beautiful, right? So it's all about an idea. So to be true to an idea, you have to value 
that vitality over finish, movement over static, expression over perfection, form over function, I put your personality over practicality, and your individuality into everything. You can take a picture. All right. So, what influences how people perceive your ideas? Nothing exists until or unless it is observed. An artist is making something exist by observing it. And so you have four things that is, are fundamental, of, fundamental of, for how people perceive your ideas. It's your self-perception, your message, your language and your tone of voice. It's pretty much everything that consists on building any brand identity, guys. So it's not only about actual art, it's about building any brand identity. You build and you, when you do that, you always talk to the inner child of other people. You sell a dream, you sell this vision, and then you make it more practical. So the aura about every person and every artist, every brand, is more important than what actually is the product. Every advertising, it, it's built on that. Like Apple, it's not about computers, it's about creativity, right? Harley Davidson, it's not about motorcycles, it's about being revolt. And so you sell this idea, and you, if you are an artist yourself, you need to convince, if you want to convince people to, to a worth of your work, you need to convince them to your own worth. So you need to believe that you are representing yourself, whatever your product actually is. So the next thing is how to make your idea memorable. First of all, you need to disturb. Contradict, provoke, disagree, challenge, shock, surprise, create a different way of looking at the same thing. You have a few examples of very fun design that are very surprising, very ironic, very playful, disturbing, provoking, that simply grab your attention because there is something that just doesn't feel right. Very famous painting in the history of art, René Magritte, the title of that painting says, this is not a pipe. <laughs> but it's not, it's a painting of a, of a pipe. But because there is this contradiction when you look at it, it came, it actually gave this painting his fame. And expressionists were the first actually movement in the, in the history of art who started to do painting about paintings and not about whatever they would perceive. Um, and they, they would see in front of them. Another great advertising is think small. Such a contradiction, right? We are used to thinking big, having big, big objects. Their aim was not only to change people's perception about the product, their goal was to change people's perception in general. Mentality that big is always better. One of the most successful advertising in the history. So another thing that really is fundamental is to allow people to participate. People love participating. And I think one of the very famous artists who absolutely changed the world for better place is GR. Um, he prints the portraits of normal, usual people and put them in the most poor uh, area of all around the world. And he started a movement in um, 2011, when he, um, wh whatever, whenever somebody would actually send him a portrait, he would print it for them, send them back so they, people could put them anywhere, right? In, since that date, he printed over 100,000 of portraits that he sent to over 108 countries, creating one of the biggest union between people. Beautiful project. Another thing is inspire. And again, you don't inspire, you can truly inspire people with who you are and not necessarily with what you do. I love this example, I don't know if anybody of you know. Iris Apfel was an architect and businesswoman. She was completely not known for fashion. She had one of the biggest collections of fashion in the world, but it wasn't her job, it was just her passion. And one day, 
her friend, Harold Koda, who is a curator in charge of the Costume Museum in New York, uh, had an exhibition planned. And in the last minute, that exhibition was cancelled, and he didn't know what to do. So he asked Iris, could you lend us your collection of clothes and maybe style them in the way you would actually st style them for yourself? She said, yes, no problem. The exhibition was one of the biggest success ever, and at 90-something years old, she became like this fashion icon. There was a documentary made about this, all the press and everything, and it wasn't because of her skill, it's because of who she was. And because it was so authentic, she, would not, she was not doing this for work, she was doing this because she is in love with fashion. And I think you can truly, really only inspire people with really who you are and not what you do. The other thing that is extremely important and crucial is to bring in emotion to whatever you do. It doesn't matter if it's in advertising, it doesn't matter if it's a piece of art. If you want people to remember, bring in emotion. Again, storytelling. If you want people to remember whatever you educate them on stage, bring stories. Because story creates a link to your emotion and that creates a link to your memory. So, how you can bring emotion? You can bring emotion in the very surrealist way, like here. when it's nervous sculpture, when people just can play with it. It's absolutely beautiful piece of art, very abstract, although so sensual. But you can also bring emotion in the most obvious way. This is one of my absolutely favorite artists, Marina Abramovic. She's a Serbian performer artist and her work explore the relationship between performance and audience. And her entire exhibition consisted on her sitting in the room and looking into other person's eyes. Now, I will play it to you and you can feel a little bit um, the emotion that she was able to build in the room. There she was, he just had to know that she had forgot his name. Powerful, right? This was actually a person that she knew years ago who came during her exhibition. She has no idea that person will appear. And he made her a surprise. It was her ex-lover. But how powerful that is just to look into somebody's eyes. Because we all, all we truly internally desire is to be seen. And so when you make somebody be seen, they will remember you forever. That's why in here and Mind Valley, we practice so many exercises when we look into each other's eyes, when we hold our hands on our heart, because it's crucial. We want to recognize another person, part of ourself. So when you give to the other people permission to feel that, it's the most powerful thing you can do. Another thing that makes your art rememberable, it's change somebody's perception. So basically look at the same thing, what we already mentioned, in a different way. Great artists who represent, mix old with new, represent completely new ways in looking at the same thing, 
Another great advertising I love that reminds us to use always our imagination, logo. But what I really want to talk to you about is to how change somebody awareness. And this is when conscious creativity is so important because this is not any longer an accidental art. This is an art that you plan. This is the art when you talk about the problem that exists, the problem that you want to resolve. And in this kind of art, the, one, the, the more what you actually say, the less people will, will remember. So in art, in order to change people's awareness, you need to ask yourself why you are doing something. What is the goal that you want to succeed, succeed with? What is the problem that you want to solve and why does the problem exist? And I think it's one of the most powerful art that exists in nowadays society because that art can actually sh help to shift people's awareness about pretty much everything and make this world a better place. And I'm going to show you different examples of very powerful advertising that are aiming to really, really change our awareness. The first one is Dove. Right? They ask people to choose the door they will walk through. What do you think most of the people chose? Average. Because we don't give ourselves a permission to feel beautiful. Another one. And hate. So powerful, so simple. How strong is that? It makes you realize, it makes you really realize where the problem in the society and how much is still, how much we still have to do to shift people consciousness about that. Pollution. Very powerful. Another one. Consumption. War. It always comes back to you. Homeless people. It's sad, huh? Plastic. And Dove Real Beauty Sketches. One of the very powerful advertising. If someone asks you, how would you describe yourself? What would you say? Well, they did this test. They asked a woman to describe herself to an FBI-trained sketch artist. And then they, describe, uh, they asked an unknown person to describe this, that, that same woman to him. And he would create two different sketches that he would present. What they found is like the sketch that woman described about herself was much more ugly than the sketch that was actually described by the unknown person. I have this whole thing about having dark circles and crow's feet around my eyes and the was not part of the sketch at all that the stranger did. The stranger's was a little more like gentle. She looks closed off and fatter. She just looks kind of shut down. 
All right. So we don't realize how beautiful we actually are very often, as much as we don't realize how big potential we have inside us. And since we were a child, we created this vision of ourselves of who we sh think we should be and how we think we should behave. And every time we would not fit into that vision of ourselves, we would punish ourselves for that. We would beat us ourselves up. And not only we create that vision about ourselves, we actually create that vision most of the time about our partners as well. We have that vision of ideal person and we try to feed them into it, right? And so, in order to liberate your full creativity, it's very important to let go of that vision and open up to the possibility. You can't possibly know who you are, and that's perfectly fine. Stay open to who you might become. And in order to dis actually rediscover who you are, you need to completely let go of you, who you think you are in the first place. Very often you can think who you are and feel who you are at the same time. So just let go of all this frame, all this vision of who you think you might be and just open up and the life will bring you the exact tools in the exactly right time, in the exactly right place, moment and will guide you to be wherever you should be. So the world needs dreamers and the world needs doers, but above all, the world needs dreamers who do. <laughs> so to summarize, stay creative. Remain curious, don't be afraid of imperfection. Embrace impermanence, do usual things in a usual way. Challenge everything, let go of the result. Reimagine and recreate. Let the idea come to you. Choose right medium and never limit yourself. Right? So I'm going to ask you right now, one more time. Now, how many of you think you can be creative? Yes. <laughs> All right. You are creative. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. And if, if you would like to check out some of my work, you can find it on this website. Thank you so much, guys, and have a wonderful journey through the two weeks left of MVU, and I really invite you to rediscover yourself and rediscover who you might become after this experience and rediscover who you might become every single day. Thank you.